What's cooking, Wolverines? I'm back talking about more Survivor Michigan with another interstitial season, another recap of a recap of an online game played by college Survivor players. We are in the nichest of the niche. It's Survivor Michigan 4.5. What a fun season to talk about. Um, off the jump, I watched it when it came out, thought it was very funny, watched it again before making this, thought it was still very funny, so I'm excited to jump in. Um, it's a super neat format, and I'll get into that in the first slide, probably. Um, so yeah, diff different than regular online Survivor, but it's still very fun and exciting, and has a lot of fun moments, so excited to talk about it. We start off with Ian and Nick uh, are back from 2.5, along with Chloe, who is on a season three in production. Um, it's her instead of Katie. Ian says he knows nothing other than Tom did something bad to Matthew, and Chloe's like, I don't remember Tom doing anything. And Nick's like, oh, Tom did something, which is like the perfect way for me to get invested in the season immediately. Um, the season itself, it's not just Survivor, though. Each week of the game will have a different format based off different reality TV games. Makes it kind of neat and interesting differently. Uh, different and um, maybe a little bit harder to follow, but once you get the idea of what each format is, it's easier to understand. And uh, most of the formats end up with, you know, people winning challenges, nominating people, people facing off in challenges, that sort of thing. Um, so, yeah. The uh, cast itself, it's mostly Michigan players this time. Oh, we've got Abby, Adam slash AJ, Andrew, Bree, Chloe, Cooper. Dylan, Emily B, Emily P, Aaron, Jack, Cat, who's not the season four player, but is Jack's girlfriend at the time, uh, Katie, who's on 2.5 and production, Kevin, not the Zooper, but season two player, uh, Matthew, Richard, and Tom. So pretty, pretty fun cast, and I've got the pictures there for you. Um, Ian says Chloe, or questions Chloe about wanting to play this, but not All-Stars. And Chloe mentions that she knew All-Stars was going to be an emotional season. This is just going to be like a fun summer thing, but not a whole lot of pressure to it. And since she wasn't going to play All-Stars, kind of gave her more like free reigns to, to, to play. Um, Nick mentions the pre-gaming for All-Stars was huge here. Nick mentions that Sam wanted to play, but was worried about backstabbing players right before All-Stars. Kind of talks about other people, too, but mentions Sam specifically by name. And it's, like, the idea of, like, backstabbing or making a big move the summer before All-Stars is, like, yeah, I can understand not wanting to do that. Nick says, it's meant to be silly and fun. People got invested. These Michigan players, they get invested in these games, and it's very fun. The first week is King of the Nerds week. Um, we've got, you know, players splitting off into teams. I think Nick says at some point that they're randomly generated. Um, sometimes they're based off of different factors, but I'll get into that. Um, Abby, Emily P., Andrew, Jack, Matthew, Kat, Emily B., and Tom are a team. And then Aaron, Chloe, Dylan, Kevin, Cooper, Katie, Adam, Bree, and Richard are our team. Um, the losing team votes someone from their team into a challenge. Uh, the left team there loses. And uh, Tom's name... Oh, and then the team on the right, the winning team, will vote in a player from the losing team as well. So the losing team votes someone from their team in, and the winning team picks someone to face off against them in a challenge. Uh, Tom's name floating around because it's Tom. The right team slash winning team was floating around Andrew's name just because he wasn't as talkative. Um, we hear that Matthew is defending Tom at the time, said Tom didn't get to play much. Um, however, Tom throws Matthew under the bus and tells Matthew that if he doesn't get saved, he's going to tell the other team to vote in Matthew, which is <laughs> so weird. Tom immediately like in danger and immediately throwing the one person that wants to help him under the bus. Very, very goofy. Uh, Tom wrote a huge monologue, which Nick has. Um, Ian gets Tom to send in a reading. The basis of it is that he's just throwing Matthew under the bus, talks about, like, tyrants and, and making moves, and it, it's it's ridiculous. Um, I wanted to do a, a reading of it, but it, it's very long. 
but go if you're gonna if you're curious like oh 4.5 I, I don't know it's weird formats i don't know just go watch it at least for the tom monologue it's it's early into the <laughs> into the video and it's very very funny if you like tom and all of his tomness but it cracked me up that's for sure um Tom sent this speech to every single player in the game. Chloe says this was on day one, and he sent a whole two-page monologue targeting his ally. Uh, so, so funny. Only only Tom. Um, Team Chloe does, in fact, throw in Matthew, because you might as well. T they knew Tom was going to get voted in, so it's like, you know, let's just throw Matthew in the challenge anyways. You have plausible deniability there. Matthew and Tom face off in a challenge in week one, and Matthew wins, which makes Tom the first boot. Uh, what a what a first week to the game. Uh, Ian mentions that this hurt Tom going into All-Stars, made Bailey wary, made Nick wary. Like, this is something that the players actually talk about in regards to Tom. Chloe says early on, there were friendship alliances. Um, this is related. This is more like game central stuff, not just like tied to week one, but... Um, you know, her and Aaron and Dylan were aligned to some season, you know, some season three love there. Uh, Cooper and Aaron are super close. Cooper and, um, not Cooper, Chloe and Emily B have a secret alliance. Everyone thought they hated each other, so they worked together in secret. Um, and also Aaron and Emily B didn't like each other, so this, uh, put Chloe in a good spot. She had info from different players, different groups, different alliances. Uh, and Ian says it's some Devin and Dylan shit right there. And yes. <laughs> very well done chloe and emily b um and real quick on king of the nerds i've seen this show i really liked the first season when it came out although i probably watched it when i was in like it could have been middle school but i think it was i think it was in high school I watched the first season and like some of the third season it was neat and moving on <laughs> uh week two uh, it's based off the challenge Dirty 30. Um, the ch I've never watched a full challenge season. I I've come close to finishing some, but it's just not not always my cup of tea. I like that the, the players get reused a lot. That's kind of neat. I don't like players playing like for other seasons. That's not as interesting, but you know, seeing the same people come back and have different stories is kind of fascinating. Anyways, um, the tribes are dissolved. They talk about this but the, the you know the teams change pretty much every week half of the players voted and i think half of them were immune and emily p gets voted in voting in meaning has to face someone in a challenge um a season three alliance formed with everyone except emily p and i think emily b she found out about it uh <laughs> which put her in trouble emily p faces off against cat um andrew had the sole power to send someone in and chose her they talk about how it's just because, like, she seemed like an easy person to throw in since she has, you know, the least ties. Um, and Emily P. loses and is the second boot. And Ian calls it a tragic boot order, order similar to All-Stars. Um, and, yeah, that's kind of weird. Like, I, I, I feel like Emily P. seems like, because knowing she played, like, live games and did really well in those, kind of would have been cool to hear about her crushing a, an online game team. But, oh, well. I have to watch her live games, I guess, and then report back if they're very good. Maybe someday. Live games are probably shorter than full college seasons. We'll see someday. <laughs> but that's week two, pretty short one. Week three, it's Survivor. Everyone, everyone, if you're watching this, you probably know what Survivor is. Um, it's Survivor week. Nick says Matthew wasn't very active, and there wasn't much strategy. But Chloe says no there's a lot of strategy um this is so funny to me matthew is targeted for being knowledgeable and um an alliance formed called the poachers since matthew is the lion uh such a good name well done michigan uh chloe mentions the irony of voting matthew during the survivor week since that's his thing also pretty funny um and nick mentions that matthew is busy and said you know he's gonna take out tom week one and then may have to quit <laughs> <laughs> uh, everyone voted Matthew except Bree and Matthew, who voted for Richard. Chloe says she doesn't think she spoke to Bree the entire game. Ian asks if she was on the outs or connected and stuff, and they're like, yeah, she was on the outs. So, get a bit of Bree info there. Learned about the poachers, which is hilarious to me. Uh, for another, like, kind of short week, 
uh, in terms of like stuff going on, but it's still so funny. The Poachers is, I mean, they cr like the perfect alliance name to target Matthew. But yeah, that's that's week three. Uh, week four, uh, final reckoning slash rivals, which I think is another ch yeah challenge uh, sort of deal. The players are paired with people low on their rankings who they liked slash were close to. This is something that Nick sent out where it was like, um, I think they call it a trust list. Like, who do you trust the most or least and you, like, rank them? So you're paired with people low on your rankings. Um, and it's like the average of everybody and stuff. So um, let's run through the pairs. We've got Kat and Richard. Nick says they bickered all the time. Uh, Andrew and Bree had no connection. Adam and Jack. Adam was getting close with the season three group. Jack was close with the others. Um, Nick says at this point, you know, people started to game the trust list. Chloe says she put Emily Bilo constantly, and I was like, some good stuff. Uh, Katie and Chloe are paired up, but we're close. Um, Dylan and Kevin paired up. Cooper and Emily B. Abby and Aaron not close. Abby was tight with Emily B, who's not good with Aaron. Um, Richard and Kat won the challenge. I just realized I used the wrong version of one. That's a bummer. Uh, Richard and Kat won the challenge, which gave them immunity and extra votes. Nick says they couldn't get on the same page. They had, um, I think he says like 30 minutes to, to pick someone to go in to a challenge, and they couldn't really, like, agree and uh, kind of just settle with Andrew and Bree, since they're kind of an easy target. Not super connected players in this season. Ian asks Nick if Andrew and Cooper were working together. Nick says no. Chloe says Andrew wasn't super active. This was a time commitment and Andrew was partying. <laughs> Which was summertime in Andrew's defense. Um, and Nick says he wanted All-Stars not even knowing that Cooper and Andrew were neighbors. Which I found fascinating. Um, because it's like such a bit, I mean, at the time of recording this, All-Stars is over. It's like wild to, to think that nobody knew about Cooper and Andrew being close. But, uh... Anyways, uh, Ian asks Nick about using 4.5 for Insight going into All-Stars. Nick says it was for fun, but he was paying attention to everything that was happening. Uh, Bray and Andrew picks a pair that voted for them to face off an elimination, which I, I like that. It's like you have to vote, you have to pick someone that voted against you, um, which doesn't get talked about too much until the end, but I'll get there. Uh, and they pick Jack and Adam, uh, but... Bray and Andrew go home. They lose the challenge. Uh, Ian asks Chloe about who she was close with, and she says Aaron, Emily B, Dylan, and Kevin got close with Jack too around this time. Mentions that the format changing kind of prevented big alliances. Nick says Chloe, Aaron, and Dylan were a trio. Cooper's close with Aaron and Katie. Uh, Emily B's close with Abby and also Chloe on the DL. Uh, Jack and Kat are close. Abby and Jack are close. Uh, Dylan and Adam become close. They kind of look out for each other. And Richard's just kind of on his own. Uh, Ian asks if Richard goes home here. Some, uh, But somehow, no. No. Nick says no, actually. Week five is The Apprentice. Uh, Nick says the Michigan production was messy, so he had teams create a season of Survivor Michigan to pitch. That was at least my understanding of what he was saying. Uh, if that is not accurate, <laughs> I'm very sorry. But that's kind of what it sounded like to me. Um, Chloe mentions challenges being used from this. Um, they talk about how Kevin leads his team to victory. Chloe talks about how fun it was and helped produce seasons. Kevin made a logo, the Labors of Arbor, which I will probably <laughs> use for the thumbnail. I'll probably just, I don't know, put a 4.5 in there somewhere and change the Labors part. But, uh, yeah, I was, I was so excited seeing the logo. Uh, both times I watched this, I was like, oh, they made a whole logo. Um, but they also made, like, posters for fundraisers, one of them being a, a ping pong challenge at Rick's, which is, like, the a place they talk about all throughout Survivor Michigan seasons. Um, and live shows, they'll bring it up. So I was like, oh, Rick's. <laughs> um, Nick wanted to create more structure for Survivor seasons, and Chloe says that this challenge is mostly her and Kevin. But to get into the specifics... Um, it was two groups, Aaron, Cooper, Jack, Richard, Abby, and Kat were a group, and Chloe, Kevin, Dylan, Emily, B, and Katie were a group. And I'm probably forgetting someone, uh, <laughs> so I'm sorry, but that's the general, that's I think mostly everybody. Um, 
so the the group with Aaron lost, and Aaron got to bring people into elimination with her. They talk about how Aaron and Kevin were the leaders for their tribe slash groups. Um, the groups were randomly generated, and um, you know they voted for a leader. And you know if if you're a leader who won, you get an advantage. If you're a leader who loses, you're up for elimination, but you get to pick two people to go with you. Um, so yeah. Kevin and Aaron were the leaders. Kevin got a legacy advantage, which is an advantage that is secret, but can be used at the final five. And Aaron brings in Abby and Kat into elimination with her. And the way you're eliminated this round is that the players up for elimination are judged by the effort they put in for the week. I think Nick says it's by him and, like, a few other people. Um, but Nick says Abby put in no effort, which Ian says is weird because Abby's an artist, which reminded me of her... Uh, shit talking cerulean as a blue which is still hilarious to me um so abby goes out for the lack of effort um they also talk about like you know abby signed up for like a fun strategic game and uh this week required no strategy so that's kind of like why she didn't work hard and i'm like okay yeah i get that um Ian asks about Kat at this point nick says that she had a few connections through jack and emily b it was kind of saved through jack uh, and winning a few challenges and stuff. That's week five. Week six is Big Brother week. Big Brother, what a, what a show. <laughs> Cat wins HOH. Um, she's safe and nominates two people for elimination. Nick says he was excited for Cat to win. She wasn't in the dominant group, you know, all the season three people and like, you know, Cooper and Katie. Um, and Adam. Chloe says she threw the challenge, wanted to hide her alliances. Always a good strategy in Big Brother. Well, I say that. I, the meta's kind of changed over time, but any, anyways. Uh, Chloe, oh no, I just read that. Kat's thinking of Dylan and Richard as noms. Dylan is a pawn because they don't talk much. Richard as a target because she doesn't like Richard. Um, I think I think what happened was Dylan won veto, and then she renoms Kevin. Um, I don't actually remember them saying that but kevin ends up on the block next to richard that i do know for sure um because kevin was telling cat he has a power so like oh be careful uh and then she puts kevin on the block because of course uh kevin told chloe about her advantage was secretive about it to um you know doesn't tell everybody but tells the people he's working close with was kind of how i read into that um nick says 4.5 was kevin's redemption arc he wasn't too chaotic but he's making genuine alliances up until this point, at least. We'll see if that changes. Uh, Chloe says the core was her Dylan, Aaron. But Kevin and Adam were close with them, too. And Kat, at this time, was spearheading a girls' alliance. Um, and Chloe and Jack were still getting close. Um, Aaron and Cooper had a final two. Chloe mentions having four final twos. Nick brings up Aaron being, like, very loyal to Cooper. Cooper's allied with everyone a bit, but mostly with Aaron. And Nick mentions the limited pl- Eliminated. Eliminated players are playing games as well, and that Abby won her way back into the game. Uh, and Ian says it's just like All-Stars. Did I not write? Okay, I didn't write that. Uh, they vote out Richard. Should probably be obvious, uh, <laughs> given the notes about Richard's point. It's still very funny that I forgot to write it in. But yeah, Richard gets voted out, sitting next to Kevin, and then Abby wins her way back into the game. And that's Big Brother Week. Big Brother is a show... Um, I loved Big Brother Canada, felt good about production, then they cancelled feeds, have not kept up with the season much. Big Brother US kind of gave up, like, immediately last season. Maybe try watching it again this season, I don't know, though. It's a hot mess. I need to talk about the seasons at some point, though, for US Big Brother, because I had Canada. And that was fun. And I like some US seasons. But that's not what this is about. What this is about is Pirate Master now. It's all about Pirate Master uh a game that they talk about and the first time i was like that sounds cool and i'll, I'll google it and then i didn't um and now i i shouldn't but i still pr- haven't done it since making the slides though so we'll see um but the way pirate master week works is like um you vote for like a a pirate master or a ship captain i i can't remember um and that that they pick two people to be safe and the safe players with the captain slash pirate master nominate players to be voted out uh, dylan wins the captain slash pirate master and is safe and picks aaron and adam to be immune 
And um, Chloe brings up Napgate, <laughs> which is fun. Uh, everyone had to vote for someone to be the captain slash pirate master, and Chloe suggested to Kat that, oh, like, you should be captain. Um, however, Dylan and Anne were trying to make one of them captain. So Chloe texted Kat to be captain. Um, you'd, like, you text Nick your, like, who you want to vote for, um... So she texts Nick that she voted for Cat, screenshots it, um, tells Dylan and Aaron that she's like she's gonna be asleep. She's taking a nap. So if anyone asks about her, Chloe's asleep. Uh, <laughs> that way, um, you know, if Dylan wins, which is what happens, uh, she it wasn't her fault. She voted for Cat and was asleep. Um, and Dylan and Aaron are on board with this. I can't remember why. They talk about why, and I just don't remember. But uh, very funny. that It's just like, no, 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 I voted for you. I was asleep. <laughs> um, I was asleep. They must have changed the plan when I was sleeping. Just so funny to me. Um, but anyway, Dylan had enough votes to be captain, even with Chloe voting for Cat. Keeps Chloe safe with everybody. Uh, you know, she's good on on all fronts there through Napgate. Em seems confused why uh, vote screenshots were allowed, and Nick's like, I don't think that they were. Uh, it says it sounds like Chloe didn't play All Stars because it would be too easy, uh, which cracked me up. But Jack and Cat are nominated along with Abby. Abby was brought back, and she had an advantage in the challenge. It didn't work out. I can't even remember what it was, but it kind of just doesn't matter because. She doesn't get voted captain slash fire master. Um, but anyways, Abby's not being targeted. Chloe says the girls' alliance kind of comes together here. Cat, who is Jack's girlfriend, was pitching against him. Um, they talk about like Jack went for a, a run, like like, and then Cat was like target Jack or like something like that, um, pitching hard against Jack and voted against Jack, which is funny to me. You, you'd think they would come together against Abby, but no. Um, and Jack gets voted out, and there's only one vote against Cat, which I guess would have been Jack. I don't know. Um, Ian says Chloe's so insulated, asks if anyone caught on, and she says no. Ian asks if Cooper knew about the Girls' Alliance. Uh, <laughs> oh, if Cooper knew about the Girls' Alliance, he would have flipped out, which is very funny in hindsight. Nick says Cooper does, does have a moment coming up, and Ian says he will get Cooper for a brief cameo. will join for his big round, which is a fun one to talk about. Week 8, though, uh, Are You the One? Second Chances. People high in each other's trust lists get paired up, so we get Emily B slash Aaron, Cooper and Aaron, no, Emily B and Abby, Cooper and Aaron, Dylan and Adam, Chloe and Kevin, and then Katie and Kat are paired up um, because they weren't high, like, high up enough on anyone else's list. Like, um, I think she's probably, like, two for Cooper, but since Cooper and Aaron both picked each other for one, they get paired up, and that's, so it's like, Katie and Kat were, like, probably, like, a little lower on everyone else's list. Not quite anyone's number one. Uh, which bites them in the butt here. Maze challenge. Um, it, it's like a something about like completing a maze. And then uh, you have a newly wed game style challenge where you just answer questions about your partner. And I think it's like the more questions you get right or the better you do, it lowers your maze time. Um, and then the losing team will get put up for elimination. So Nick says... Katie and Kat get put up, they lose the challenge, um, Dylan and Adam are safe, and everyone votes in a pair to face off against Katie slash Kat. Whoever's nominated can pick to stay in the game with their partner or volunteer to leave for $10, and there's like a steal share element. Nick talks about taking the money in an online game not seeming crazy to him, but of course Michigan players are going to always pick stay. Uh, Emily B and Abby have to choose stay slash leave. If they stay, the other pair is out. So it's not really a, a challenge. And uh, Emily and Kat get eliminated. No. No, no, no. I put Emily and Kat are eliminated. It's uh, <laughs> Katie and Kat are eliminated. Um, and they each get $20. And the money that comes from a, a $5 player fee. Nick says everyone thought the money still share thing was dumb. Um, they talk about Katie being burned by the pairing and money thing, and that she had Cooper and Aaron as allies, so didn't talk about her too much throughout the game, but uh, kind of goes out in a, you know, less exciting way compared to 2.5, but uh, that's okay. And Kat got me too soon. She was fun. Uh, but next, it's week nine, The Bachelor. 
Um, it's the highest average trust player amongst everyone's list becomes the bachelor, which is Adam. And Nick says this is very telling because Adam is good socially, had few enemies, was high up on a lot of people's lists. Um, everyone else had to compete, and the winners would win like a group date and could nominate people with Adam. Adam, Kevin, and Aaron agree to nominate three players, and Adam picks one of them to send home. So Abby, Emily B, and Dylan get nominated. Chloe, at this point, tells Adam about her Emily B secret relationship and talks about how they bonded talking about reality TV like Bachelor in Paradise, um, which helped save Emily B, and because of this, Abby gets sent home. Um, Chloe mentions wanting Emily B at the end as an under-the-radar goat, and without her, there wasn't another goat. Um, See, I need stuff there. Chloe... I, I, wild to me that she tells Adam this and Adam doesn't just send no memory be anyways uh, but it's fun <laughs> very well done on Chloe The Bachelor is a show that I watched it was a season where Ari was The Bachelor and I it, it was like I was seeing the previews and I was like this seems like a good show to shit talk with my sister for fun and we did and then I like kept trying to watch seasons but I mean, Bachelor and The Bachelor it's like if you watch that by yourself, like, more power to you. I can't do it. Like, I, I have to watch that with other people to, to... Or else it's just, like, I don't know, like, brain fog. Like, I can't do it. <laughs> but it's fun to just be like, oh, these people are goofy. And, like, that's it. Um, Bachelor in Paradise, though, I could watch it by myself all day. That show is amazing. Uh, they just take all the hot mess people and put them on a beach. And they're like, all right, <laughs> go go have fun. And then they do. Um, so yeah, excited that they had a, a Bachelor week. Also, Ari was the Bachelor. That man was kind of boring. He's probably a nice enough person. But not the not the most interesting TV lead. Just saying. That's my Bachelor experience. <laughs> week 10. The Genius. The best game of all time. Uh, uh, they, they play a game. It's like every player gets $500. There are rounds where players have to bet. The winner, whoever bets the most, uh, oh no, whoever wins the the overall game, is safe and saves two other people. The uh, the loser will pick someone that isn't immune to face off against in a challenge. The person with the least amount of money at the end of the um, like main game loses. Someone could lose the challenge, but will still have money. Uh, there are a lot of rules. It gets it gets more it gets easier to understand when Cooper comes in. Um, Nick mentions main matches and death matches from the de- genius. I gotta talk about it someday. I, I I love all four seasons of the genius are like top ten seasons of anything for me, and season four is probably my favorite. Um, it's definitely my favorite. Uh, I, anyways, Cooper joins for his spicy round. Cooper had told Nick this was the only round that he really remembered. Um, talk more about the challenge. Winning a bet loses your coins slash money but you pick someone to eliminate nick mentions people not wanting to spend money at the start of the challenge adam spent a lot and eliminated kevin and everyone else realized if they bet one less than adam the rest of the challenge adam will go to the, the death the death match which is where he has to face someone in a challenge um so after this emily b and dylan get eliminated adam cooper and Clo- adam cooper chloe and Anne are left in the challenge. Cooper realizes he could shift the target to the season three trio. Wants to kind of force Chloe and Dylan in a death match. Didn't know about Chloe and Emily B being close. Um, Chloe brings up Aaron visiting her in New York while Cooper is flipping on her and it being awkward. Uh, Cooper teams up with Adam. They had enough money to make bets to send in Chloe. Cooper can make sure Adam wins um, and can send out Aaron and Chloe. And then Cooper. Oh, and then, like, so if, if they send out Aaron and Chloe and Adam wins, Adam can make Cooper and um, Emily B safe, which kind of forces the alliance to turn on each other. Uh, Chloe is pissed. Cooper says he announced what they were doing to everyone in the game since the math worked out in a way where, um, you know, the, their strategy wouldn't fail. However, uh, eliminated players from this, like, main match challenge can still bet. Um, so Kevin spends all of his money, which, uh, forces Cooper to be the winner, 
and then forces himself to be the loser of the challenge. Chloe brings up her and Kevin texting and how he collects playbills. Chloe and Kevin make a deal. Chloe, who's in New York and seeing shows, will get Kevin a Dear Evan Hansen playbill, and he will go into the death match. <laughs> Just like... The most random thing for me as a viewer, I did not know this about Kevin. I don't even know him and Chloe were friends before 4.5. It's just so funny. Um, Cooper, Adam, and Emily would be safe, so Kevin would likely choose Dylan for the death match. Chloe says Kevin thought it would be fun to be chaotic and face off against Dylan. Also, Kevin said if he goes out, he'll give Chloe his advantage. So it's all coming up, Chloe. Cooper had this amazing idea to <laughs> flip the game on its head. <laughs> and Kevin's just like, no, I'll lose on purpose so this doesn't happen. Uh, Cooper says he was pissed, so are Adam and Emily B. Cooper's remember being confused in shock. Um, Nick says Cooper is ready to take control of everything, and Kevin said, F that. Um, we get a Kevin recording sent in. Kevin talks about watching and enjoying season one of The Genius while playing 4.5. Season one of the genius is amazing. I get that. Wanted to make a spectacle, but nothing too crazy. Uh, big, big Kyung Hoon energy from Kevin. Uh, says he has the ego of a maniac. Said if the challenge doesn't go his way, he will make it go his way. Talks about if he wins the uh, death match, he can save his ally, get some credibility. Says his favorite thing to do is to piss people off. Uh, talks about being a masco massive musical fan, and then he pans the camera down. And he's wearing a wicked shirt. Uh, shows off his playbills. Kevin says it may have affected him in All Stars, and then he's an Enigma slash Wild Card. It's just like very funny. Like, oh, we get to hear from Kevin being weird. I love it. So Kevin and Dylan face off in the death match, and Kevin goes home. Uh, Adam, Emily B, and Cooper are on one side. Devin, Chloe, and Aaron are on the other, going into the final six. And Chloe was publicly targeting Cooper after this. Cooper mentions the format meant that you had to win challenges or you are out. Which leads into uh, week 11, uh, Endurance, a show I've never seen. The winner of the challenge sends two people into elimination. Dylan wins, sends in Adam and Cooper. Uh, Cooper for openly targeting them. Adam for kind of betraying them. The challenge was to stay awake for a random buzzer. Um, it went on for like 12 hours, they say. And it was something where like every five minutes you have to send in a message. Um, and Dylan allegedly competed this in this for many, many hours. They say 12 and then kind of seem unsure, but a long time. Cooper says it was going to be Dylan or Adam who won. Uh, Cooper was busy. The elimination challenge was a challenge of fate, being rock, paper, scissors, uh, <laughs> which Cooper lost. So Cooper's out at six. Adam moves forward, being the rock, paper, scissors champion. Week 12 is capture. Um, one player is the tagger. There are um, a series of challenges, like mini-games, and if the tagger beats nobody, then they're eliminated. If the tagger beats one person, they're up for elimination with the person they beat. And if the tagger beats two, you have the power to nominate uh, who goes home, or gets voted for. Um, and Chloe's legacy advantage that she got through Kevin is that she can pick the tagger, and she chooses Aaron, uh, who is apparently known for being a Flash game legend. Uh, which is some fun and random lore that I, I just said, like, that's cool. All right. Chloe mentioned starting to gun for Aaron around this point and was okay with Aaron winning or losing. Aaron wins the challenge, the Flash Game Goat. Uh, Aaron nominates Emily B and Adam. Chloe and did Dylan vote off Adam. Chloe was an obvious vote against Adam and remembers trying to sway Dylan. Um, but Dylan was kind of betrayed by Adam during the Genius Week, and Emily B was viewed as a goat, so not the hardest decision. Uh, Ian asks if it was hard to convince Dylan to boot Adam, and Chloe says no. Uh, and then <laughs> Ian gasses up Chloe even more for how good she was this season. Uh, yeah, it all comes of Chloe. It's very fun. Ian mentions Dylan and Aaron being back-to-back -back Final Four. You know, season three they did it, season 4.5 they do it again, so that's neat. The final four, I don't remember if this was based off a show or just challenges. I, I genuinely don't remember. Um, but it was a multiple layered challenge. Dylan misunderstood the directions. And uh, it's basically like if you lose the challenge overall, you're out. It's not like a vote or anything. And Dylan thought if he did good enough in the first three out of four challenges, he'd be fine, which led to him not doing anything in the fourth challenge. Um, 
So so Dylan loses and goes out at final four. Um, reminds me of like, oh, you need to, and no, I don't know. I, it, it's like when a, I've had like a college class where it's like, oh, you, your lowest grade gets dropped. So like people wouldn't do their essays. Like if you had two essays for that class, you'd just not do one. And I was like, but what if you fail the other essay? I don't know if it's like that at all. It's just what it would be think of. Moving on. Uh, <laughs> Ian mentions, uh, he says, like, thank God they don't do fire making in Survivor Michigan. And I have the note of, that made me nervous the first time I watched it. I'm, I'm almost positive. And also, there is a live show towards the end of All Stars where they talk about, like, not, do, not doing fire at Michigan and thank God. And there's, like, a bit of, like... I felt like something was up. Like, I don't know, maybe, like, future Michigan seasons, they do a tiebreaker challenge at four. Or, like, maybe Michigan State. Because, uh, you know, that that's that's coming out sooner or later. Uh, but I, I hope they don't. I hate, you know, nobody... Does anyone like the Final Four tiebreaker challenge? I don't think so. The Not to make this about regular Survivor, but, like, the, the Jeff Probes podcast during season 44 which is airing now it's getting a lot of guff because jeff keeps like he's like defending the fire making it's like oh but it's boring like jesse would have just gotten voted out at final four without it it's like he would have played a different game you wouldn't play to to be the biggest third at final four if you know you have a chance to make five but whatever i don't need to get i don't need to get worked up about that um and this is about why I like Super michigan 4.5 so anyways dylan is out so our final three are Chloe, Aaron, and Emily B. We get our final tribal council speeches, which they all send in, which is cool. Um, they're a bit hard for me to follow. I think not having like them all next to each other and like editing and stuff is a little bit. Also, this is you know it's like three hours. Um, but I've got the basics, you know, the 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 basic bits of every everybody's final tribal stuff. Um, Chloe's speech is about making relationships due to being bad at challenges. That was like her plan coming in. Had a lot of individual relationships. Talked about Aaron and Emily B being her closest allies. I know they're the final three. Talked about not per- participating in All Stars as well, um, which make which made her um, kind of a bigger target because people wouldn't be worried about like backstabbing her. Um, which I liked that point. I thought that was pretty smart. Talks about lying on their trust list. Mentions her close allies and main alliances. Mentions Kevin throwing his game away for her. Um, explains Napgate in her final tribal council speech, which I loved. Um, and brings up her success and challenges and Cooper being the only person she was like vocally against. It's all pretty good. Um, I will say off the jump, of all the final tribal speeches, I thought Chloe's was the best. Like, I feel like she explained her game very well. And also having her narrate the season uh, with Nick and Ian, um, I was like, yeah, all of this sounds accurate to me. So just saying that off the jump. Emily B is next, talks about chance and luck and challenges, mentions her close allies, including Chloe, talks about letting low and having an alliance with Jack, Cat, and Abby, talks about wanting to target Aaron but not being able to because of the format, and says Aaron and Chloe glided through the game while she fought from the bottom throughout the game um so kind of like the underdog pitch which i think i think in a season where like a lot of it is challenges i feel like this should work more often than not you know like it it, the only reason you don't face adversity in a in a game like this is by winning challenges and when the challenges are like little games it's like eh. i mean some of them are more interesting than others though like uh like Dylan winning a, a buzzer thing where he had to send a message every five minutes for many hours. Like, oh, okay, like that that should probably get some kudos. But anyways, uh, <laughs> that's like the basics, basic bits of Emily B's speech. And then Aaron's was, she talks about being loyal to Chloe, Cooper, and Dylan. Told everything to Cooper and Chloe. Had a tight trio with Cooper and Chloe. Uh, I thought it was Dylan and Chloe, but anyways, it mentions winning a majority of the pre-jury challenges, wasn't eligible for elimination during many rounds, talks about her flash game skills, talks about making a vote split during the pair week where Brie and Andrew went out, uh, talks about throwing her vote there so she wouldn't be picked as a target, which I liked, they didn't really talk about it that round, but I, I liked hearing that, because I'm like, okay, there was some a bit more strategy that week than I had thought, um, 
it makes like the um the whole like you can only face off against someone that voted for you a bit more interesting um talks about the pirate master vote spread it says she's working with everyone had to betray jack and cat at the pirate master week that's kind of aaron's speech um the votes chloe mentions a lot of her game was a secret so the players thought she was in a duo with aaron and aaron was the bigger player so she got a lot of questions about that um also mentions that players just didn't watch the videos and the people who didn't watch any videos voted for aaron um abby voted for emily b emily b told nick she knew player star as a goat so she didn't fight or pleaded it too much, um, hoping it would help for all stars. Didn't want to make herself more of a threat. Um, does have a video that kind of responds to Chloe's. Um, <laughs> at first, she starts off apologizing for the headband she's wearing in the video, which is funny. But talks about like starting the Chloe relationship and like vocalizing that she's not gonna fire back hard because of all stars. Um, this is cool seeing that. Assuming, because it looked like she like recorded that during the final rounds and just like i don't know i like that uh anyways dylan cooper and katie vote for aaron um they talk about how like katie was just gonna vote wherever cooper voted um and dylan voting for aaron mixons too um adam kevin cat and jack vote chloe so chloe wins in a four to three to one vote Jack respected Napgate, <laughs> which I really like to hear. Um, and Chloe thinks she would have gotten more votes if they watched her video. And I agree. I think her, her video is pretty well. She like laid it all out in a, a pretty cohesive way. Um, Aaron's focusing on the challenges. Uh, it it, it kind of ties into what I was saying with Emily B's, or, or at least like alluding to, where like the format had so much to do with challenges that even though they're like not crazy challenges like that probably should play a bigger role like facing adversity uh is very different in a game like this than like just regular survivor or online survivor or whatever but uh like i don't know it's still <laughs> i don't know it's for it's it's like a it's like a fun online thing i guess i i don't need to shouldn't think too hard about it um ian mentions that the stuff he heard about 4.5 was tom being sketchy People were wary of Adam, Dylan, and Aaron being tight. Nick mentions noticing how ride or die Aaron and Cooper were. And Nick says up until Kevin went out she, that he was a good player. Chloe says she was happy she won and had a great time. Ian congratulates her for running the game and facing a little adversity. Chloe gives credit to Aaron and Dylan but felt good with this since she knew she wasn't playing All-Stars. $180. Uh, Ian asks Nick, which was his favorite between 2.5 and 4.5. Nick says 4.5 talks about the format being fun, uh, but 2.5 had its moments. It was just a little smaller. Uh, Nick says this was him getting to live out his nerdy reality TV self. Nick at, or Ian asks who his fan favorite was slash who wins the sea money, and Nick says Aaron or Cooper, but switches it to Cat. Says Cat kind of got screwed over the round she went out. Um, and that's 4.5. They wrap it up. Uh, very fun very fun time I, I liked the format it was kind of neat like hearing about all the players doing different stuff uh yeah 2.5 2. i liked more for like the overlying theme <laughs> like the cooper versus Zwooper of it all is very funny uh and some of the gameplay there is very exciting but like the format here is very fun and wacky and like napgate's so funny to me the kevin playbill stuff is like one of the funniest things from all of Survivor Michigan. <laughs> like I'm just taking a challenge on purpose for a play ball. Uh, and just to be chaotic is like just classic Kevin. Like it's the most Kevin thing. This aired after um, the Kevin versus Will stuff in All Stars. So it's like this, this seems like perfectly in line with everything we know about Kevin as a player. So. Yeah, uh, I love 4.5. I love 2.5 too. I don't know which I like more. I mean, I, I had a fun time watching both when they came out and re-watching them. Um, the format of 2.5 is easier to follow, but the format of 4.5 is kind of more exciting, especially when like it's just supposed to be like a fun summer thing. So I don't know. Uh, they're both fun. You, sh you should go watch those. 
I don't know why you would watch this before watching those. <laughs> that seems a little crazy to me. Uh, but they're fun. I liked watching them, like talking about them. It's cool to see Chloe, who was someone that had potential in season three, you know, find success and have a lot of fun ideas and strategies here. Um, Nat Gates iconic. Kevin's iconic. Tom's iconic. Um, yeah, I think that's it. I love talking about this. Um, 4.5 is great. That's it. <laughs> the end. Thank you for, thank you to Nick, Ian, and Chloe, and Katie for 2.5 for talking about all this. Uh, and to Nick to put them together, that, that was super cool. So yeah, thank you. Goodbye. <laughs>